Alright, in this video I'm going to take a look at the whereabouts of the ten lost tribes of Yasharel. Now there's a lot of speculation concerning where they went. Some people say they went to Europe, some people say they went to the Americas, some people say they went east. But according to scripture, if you read scripture it says that they're scattered all throughout the four corners of the earth. But, however, if you read Second Estrus, it lets you know where most of the ten tribes can be found in these latter days. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at Second Estrus chapter 13 verses 39 to 46. Now, Second Estrus is not found within your modern day canyon Bibles, but it was included as part of the canyon in the original 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Why did they remove it? Well, it's obvious it has some information that is too hot to handle for some of these powers that be. Because if it got out there, if it was promoted, people would come to realize who the people of Yahshua are. Alright, so I'm going to show you the clues as I do in each video. And you tell me who these people are. I mean, I'm just a messenger. So let's get right to it. All right, 2nd Esdras, chapter 13, and verse 39, it says, As to the fact that you saw him collecting to himself another peaceful multitude, verse 40, These are the ten tribes that were taken captive from their land in the days of King Hosea, whom King Shalmaneser of the Assyrians took across the river as a captive. They were taken into another land, and we need to know what this other land is and was. Alright, so the ten tribes of Yashara were taken captive from their land during the days of King Hosea. The Assyrians took them across a river as captive. Alright, so... Verse 41 says that they made this plan for themselves. It's talking about Yashiro. The ten tribes made a plan for themselves that they would leave the multitude of the nations, the Gentile nations, the heathens, those that are not part of Yashiro, as far as lineage goes and promise goes. So they made this plan for themselves that they were going to leave the nations and go into a more remote region where the human race had never lived. And for those that say that this was Europe, remember the people of Japheth were already living in Europe because that was their portion, according to the Book of Jubilees. So that couldn't have been the place that the ten tribes went. So that theory is debunked, hands down, without a doubt. The human race was already living in Europe at that time. The people of Japheth were there. So it says here that it had to be a region where no human race lived. All right. Well, let's take a look at verse 42. It says that there they would be able to observe the customs which they hadn't kept in their own region. So they weren't very keen in keeping the commandments of the Most High. Nevertheless, verse 43 says they went in through the narrow passages of the Euphrates River. So, they went through the Euphrates River. And if I'm not mistaken, that means they would be heading south, not north. Alright? So again, the theory that they went into Europe is a lie. Most of them didn't go into Europe. There were some in Europe, but the majority went another route. So if they went through the Euphrates River, whether they went through it, whether they were swimming in it, or just passing through it, either way they were heading south, not north. Alright? So the Most High gave them signs and stopped the flow of the river until they had passed. So it's, it sounds here like they crossed over. It doesn't sound like they were swimming through it. Maybe they were heading east. We don't know. All right. All right, let's take a look at this here. Verse 45, it says that they made a long journey, long journey through that region. 
it was about a year and a half. And that region is called Arzareth. So they made a long journey, about a year and a half's journey. And that place is called Arzareth. If you look up the word Arzareth in the Hebrew, it means another land. Some say this was the Americas. Maybe, perhaps it was. Like I said, it couldn't have been Europe. So they lived in that region of Arsaret until the last times, and now they begin again to return. So let's take a look at that year and a half journey. Let's, let's take a look at a map to show you some of the nonsense that these uh, Europeans like to push, saying that, oh, Yashra went into Europe. It doesn't take a year and a half to get to Europe from the region of Iraq or the city of Mosul or Iraq which would be modern our modern day Nineveh the Assyrian city of Nineveh all right so let's say for those that believe or like to preach that they went into Europe all right let's let's see if there's any truth to that so remember it has to be a year and a half journey <clears throat> so from the ancient city of Nineveh, the Assyrian city, which was a nation that took Yasharel, the ten tribes, captive. All right, so from Mosul, that's the modern day city of Nineveh, or close to it, very close to it. So it's in Iraq. So let's say they went to Germany, all right? So from Mosul, Iraq, Nineveh to Germany. You see that on the screen? On foot, it takes 32 days. It doesn't take a whole year and a half. Let's say even you stop and take a lot of breaks in between. It will take you about, what, two to three months on foot? If you make good, it's not going to take you more than half a year to get to Germany. That's for sure. So it takes about a month to get to Germany on foot. Maybe a month and a half, two months. If you stop and take your sweet time. Alright, so it's nowhere near the 365 days, you know, that it would take to get to the region according to scripture. So that's a lie. They didn't went to Europe. So you could imagine the distance between uh, Mosul, Iraq, Nineveh, the Assyrian city, to any place in Europe. So let's, alright, alright, so we checked out Germany. Let's... Let's type in another place. Let's say uh, they went to the Netherlands, right? Let's say they went to the Netherlands. Well, let's check that out. How long does it take to get from Nineveh, Iraq, to the Netherlands on foot? which would be the longest distance to travel on foot. It says here it takes 36 days, a little over a month. A few more days than it would take to get to Germany. So, again, they didn't went to Europe. They didn't went to the Netherlands. They didn't went to Germany. Germany. And obviously they couldn't have gotten to, to uh, Turkey. The Caucasus Mountains, Russia, Romania, all of these other countries that are before Germany and the Netherlands and France, Spain, even England, Denmark, because it would take lesser time to get to those places. So again, 36 days. So they didn't go to the Netherlands, they didn't go to Germany, like some of these cults like to say. Alright, so all right, let's try France. Maybe France will be a year and a half journey. Nope. All right, let's see here. France. Nineveh, Iraq to France. Let's see, what's the distance on foot? Alright, it says here it takes about 37 days. 
a day longer than the Netherlands. So again, that's not nowhere near a year or half a year. Man, they walked to Europe like it was nothing. From Nineveh, from even Israel, they they walked. When they went to Europe, it was like nothing to them. It didn't take them that long. It took them a few days. Especially if they were traveling on horses or whatever. It wouldn't take them more than a couple of weeks, man. At the most. So, they didn't go to Europe. Some were in Europe, but very, very few here and there. Okay, now let's try Spain. What's the distance? From... The Assyrian city of Mosul, which is located in modern-day Iraq, and it used to be called Nineveh. So from the Assyrian city of Nineveh to Spain, it would take 34 days. It takes less time to get to Spain from Nineveh than it does to get to um, the Netherlands or France. Hmm. All right, now, let's try... Okay, this is the... This, this has got to be the deciding route for most people that say they went into England, into the British Isles, or whatever. There were some Israelites there, but let's see. All right, let's see. How long does it take to get... Now, this is the farthest distance for those that believe in the theory that they went to the ten tribes went to uh, went north and into the UK and all these other European countries. All right, oh wow, Mosul, Iraq, to London on foot is thirty eight days. At worst, what double that? About eighty days if you take your time, resting and whatever. You only double those days, so it wouldn't take you more than two, three months to get to the UK from the place where they were held captive. Again, a year and a half. That's not a year and a half to me, nowhere near it. So that is a lie that these phony preachers are telling the congregations, those that believe in the European Israelite nonsense, that they went to Europe, the European, no, uh, that's not true. There were some again, but most of the ten tribes, they went south. So, let's see how long it would take to get from there to, I don't know, let's say, America. Let's see what it gives us. See, it doesn't give us a route, so, I mean, you tell me, where did they went? Obviously, it wasn't Europe. It wasn't Africa. Africa wasn't that far from there. So, it had to be either east, had to be to the Asiatic nations, far east, or that it had to gone through the Euphrates. If they didn't cross it to go east, they went probably through the Euphrates, on boats and around Africa and into the Americas. But that's just speculation on my part. I'll leave you to decide for yourselves. So, yeah, they didn't go to Europe. Don't believe the Anglo Germanic nonsense. All right, so just take a look at uh, Second Estras. And run a map like I did here and you'll see that it doesn't take that long on foot to get to Europe from where they were held captive. Alright, so that's all I got for this video and until next time, much love. Shalom.